I have a problem. I know how to code, but I don't know how to make GUIs, so anything I make ends up looking like this. This would be 10 times prettier if we could add some buttons. There's actually a lot of different ways to do this. Java has JavaFX, Python has Tkinter, I, I mean Tkinter, <laughs> okay never mind. C++ has Qt, but we don't need classes and objects, so we're going to do this all in C with a library called GTK. I'm also using Vim this time because I want to flex that I actually know how to use this thing. So I have the GTK documentation open on the right side, and the very first thing we're going to do is draw a window to the screen. Okay, this is actually much simpler than I expected. This line creates a new window, this one gives it a title, this gives it a size, and this one shows it. But Faisal, that function looks awfully like a constructor. Are you sneaking objects into my precious C programming? Of course not, I'd never do that. So the next step is to add a button to the screen. The way GTK handles that is it lets you add a callback function like this. So you can code a function for that button and sort of connect it to the button like this. But Faisal, what the actual flip is G callback? You never defined it. It's all in caps. What's going on? Well, as should be immediately obvious to any programmer, since we're not working with objects, we have to use this macro to... Mmm, well, convert the struct to an adequate representation. This is actually a very common pattern when using GTK. You declare an object, I mean a struct, like this, but when you want to add behavior, you use a macro like this. So this is our first button. Right now, all it does is print hello world and terminate, so we're going to need to write some actual code. <sighs> yeah, it sucks, I know. Let's avoid coding for a second by sketching out what buttons we'll need. Well, obviously we need digits, arithmetic operations, an equals button, and a button that clears everything, but I want to focus more on the GUI itself, so let's skip the more advanced functions for now. Though square root algorithms are really interesting and I'll probably make a video about them in the future. So now I was trying to find out how we'll organize our buttons on the screen. There's this example of using an object, I mean a G object, called a GTK table. It looks like it's a perfect grid, which could be a good way to lay out our calculator buttons. But there are a few problems. The first one is I can't spell, but maybe more importantly, it turns out GTK table has been deprecated. But the good news is it was replaced by GTK grid. Wow, massive difference. So let's use XML to design this so-called GTK grid. I literally copy-pasted the XML from the website, but GTK just wasn't able to read the tags, so it looks like it's a bit outdated. XML might not work out after all, so let's go back to the drawing board. Like any real C programmer, we'll just hardcode our buttons instead. The way this works is we initialize this struct as a GTK widget pointer, and we use this totally not a constructor to make it a GTK grid. And then we can place buttons onto this grid. We place buttons manually with this function by specifying their horizontal and vertical positions on the grid. So after placing those buttons and making slight tweaks to the alignment, I had this. Just like every calculator app, I wanted to have a box on top to show the number as you were typing, so I used another GTK widget called GTK Label. That's not what it's supposed to show, but I'll figure that out later. Now it's time to plan how the backend will work. When you bind a function to a button, GTK lets you pass just one pointer into each callback, so I decided to wrap everything I need into a single struct. It will have a buffer to show on the screen, the first number, the second number, the operation, and since the label itself gets updated every time, a GTK widget pointer to the label. As for the functions themselves, I'll have 9 callbacks for 1, 2, 3, no, no, I'm joking. This isn't Yandere Simulator. I'll have 1 callback for all digits. There's this super neat function to read the text on the label, so I'll just use that to know what digit was clicked. The operation buttons will work in a similar way. So when you click an operation, it stores it, moves the buffer into the first integer, and clears the buffer so you can start typing in the next number. And lastly, the equals button. It has the same idea of moving stuff from the buffer, just into the second integer this time. And since we have two operands and an operation, we can actually compute whatever the user wanted. That's not 22 plus 33. I spent a few minutes trying to figure this out. I ended up just adding another int to store the result and that seemed to fix things. And that was pretty much it. So that was the journey of GUI programming in C. 
This calculator is absolutely cursed. There's no decimals, it only has arithmetic operations, and I think it explodes if you try to click two operations in a row. But I built this GUI in a day and I'm happy with that result. As for how long this all took, I started at 9.02am and finished at 6.17pm, only using ChatGPT three times because I mostly tried debugging or reading documentation on my own. Now obviously there's like two hours wasted trying to get XML to work, and most of this would be several times faster if I was already familiar with GTK. So was it worth it? Well, I spent almost a whole day trying to build a calculator, and even then it doesn't really work. But I did learn a lot by reading documentation, debugging, and even some very basic system design. So yes, I'd say it's worth it. We just need a version of C with classes baked in. So why does C hate buttons? Mainly because I don't think you're supposed to use C to build GUIs, but that's just my opinion. I think I've earned a break, and I'm off to learn some C++. Or it's time to learn the Windows API. You've reached the end of the video. If you've enjoyed this, I encourage you to subscribe if you want to see me continue struggling to program. Thank you.